Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. We are finally getting back and doing some ammo testing and some redneck science and everything. And I want to address a very common question that I've gotten from a lot of people about the new federal punch round. Uh, I say new, it's been out, what, at this point, maybe a year or so, something like that. I've finally gotten around to, to shooting a test on this particular load. We have shot quite a few of these 22 rounds into various targets over the years. And we've also ran a lot of the CCI stingers. And one of the questions that people are probably posing is, well, why should I buy the Federal Punch over the CCI Stinger? Both the projectiles weigh very similar. Uh, we have done some preliminary testing in terms of collecting uh, velocity data. I'm gonna share some energies with you here and give you an idea of what these two rounds are doing. And we'll discuss a little bit more detail here. So we tested them in a 3.6 inch barrel out of a Smith & Wesson MMP uh, 22 compact. Also a 16 inch barrel out of our Tipman M4 and a quick shout out to Gun Owners of America. This is the Gun Owners of America version. If you purchase one of these rifles, uh, they will donate a considerable amount of the proceeds to Gun Owners of America and you get the awesome laser engraved GOA logo on the gun. Shameless plug for GOA, but we support our uh, gun rights groups here. So we tested out a 16 inch barrel in the rifle. So the Stingers weigh 32 grains. Out of the M&P pistol, you're getting 11.59 on the velocity uh, for 95 foot-pounds of energy, okay? With the punch, it's a 29 grain bullet. Out of a 3.6 inch barrel, you're getting 12.35 for 98 foot-pounds of energy. Out of the 16 inch barrel, the Tipman, the 32 grain Stingers are moving 15.72, generating 175 foot-pounds of energy. The punch at 29 grains out of the 16 inch Tipman is giving 1604 for 165 foot pounds of energy. We have some gel blocks here. Um, these are clear ballistics gel blocks that we're going to be testing these rounds into. Now, looking uh, preliminarily at the rounds themselves, one interesting point to kind of look at is that with the punch, it's a flat point solid. Now, I don't really know if that's going to expand or if that flat point is going to provide a really nice cavitation in the gel. What I'm expecting to happen is that flat point is actually going to give us a really nice permanent cavity. Okay, I think the temporary cavity is going to be smaller than the CCI. All right, now when we look at this, this is touted as a varmint bullet. The Stinger is a copper plated hollow point projectile. So I would imagine that the permanent cavity is probably going to be a little bit larger and the temporary cavity is going to be probably smaller. But then again, this thing could just steamroll through. And of course, between the two, what we're trying to also see is how much penetration in terms of the distance it penetrates the gel block, uh, as well as what these cavities look like from each round. Now, we're probably going to try to shoot the gel block from one side and then flip it around because I don't really expect these rounds to go all the way through this gel block. This is a 16 inch gel block that's eight by eight. Let's go ahead and uh, shoot our first round. Now we're going to start out with handguns because here's the thing. The Federal Punch generates, according to what it says on the box here, it says that the velocity was achieved with a two inch barrel. So out of a two inch barrel, they are, they are saying that it should get velocity of 1070 with a 29 grain projectile. So should a 22 use, be used for self-defense? Well, here's the thing. If you've got a, a, a Ruger 1022 sitting around, and you throw some stingers or some punch in that bad boy, I think what we're showing here is that you've certainly got a, a decent amount of firepower if that's all you've got. Some people prefer to carry 22s as a defensive unit. What we're trying to show here is how will each of these rounds stack up against each other? How do they compare against each other? And how do they work out of a pistol length barrel? What are we gonna see in terms of the actual damage that's caused? So that's what this gel is gonna teach us. Let's go ahead and back up. We're just going to get off a few paces here and fire a shot right in the center. Let's have a look and see what happens. Okay, first test is going to be the 32 grain stinger out of the pistol. I think you guys get the idea. You can see, here we go. All right, right into the block, right in the center. All right, so definitely the result we were expecting out of the stinger. The stinger is a classic round that's been a long proven uh, 22 round for, for CCI there. Um, really, really great penetration, decent looking permanent cavity. Our temporal cavity, 
quite good at its largest size, probably about three and a half or four inches as it blossomed out there. You can see in the slow-mo shot. So, of course, I'm very pleased out of that performance out of a 3.6-inch uh, barrel. So out of a pistol, a Stinger is a pretty good round, okay? Uh, the round did tumble and it wound up uh, base forward, which that happens in a lot of jail block shots. You're going to see the round usually wind up base forward. In fact, I guarantee you the punch is going to wind up base forward in the cavity as well. And then we got right at a perfect 12 inches of penetration. Let's go ahead and test the punch, see how it uh, stacks up against the uh, stinger. All right, we got the 29 grain Federal punch out of the 3.6 inch MMP. All right, we're gonna shoot the same block in a little bit different location. I'm gonna go just a little bit low and left, and let's see if we can just get this round right where we want it. I think we got it. I can see the, the hole. I'm gonna just carefully place this round exactly where I want it. All right, well, color me impressed here on the punch. Uh, we didn't bring enough gel block with us. We, it went all the way through a 16 inch gel block and what's really interesting about the punch is that the permanent cavity is really gnarly looking and that cavity continues for a good length of the wound channel uh, getting into almost an inch beyond the penetration of the original stinger. Now the stinger had a better temporary cavity there in the beginning. You can see it really blew up a lot bigger. This one had a smaller uh, temporary cavity but that cavitation continued throughout the projectile's travel through the wound channel. So it had a larger permanent cavity and a smaller uh, a temporary cavity. So that temporary cavitation is what's gonna cause shock to organs, you know, at the heart and lung area, if you have that cavitation, you know, that's what gives a hunting bullet such energy, like a, like a, a expanding projectile that expands and gives up a lot of its energy as it enters the the flesh in, in a short term, that shock factor from that temporal cavity is what gives it its killing power. So this, you had a good mixture of penetration, permanent cavitation, and temporary cavitation. So, so far I'm happy, but we have to do one more thing. I'm gonna take another block, I'm gonna move this one back and put a catch block behind it, and we're gonna shoot the 3.6 uh, 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 inch barrel Smith with the punch again on this same block a little bit lower, and we're gonna see if we can have our other block catch the projectile because I want to see if the projectile expands or deforms and we want to see the amount of penetration we get. Then we'll set all this up again uh, and test the rifle. Let's do it. <laughs> That's quite a, a bit of ballistic gelatin for this round to get through. So we're going to see if we can catch the punch. Uh, again, 3.6 inch barrel on the Smith & Wesson MMP 22 Compact. I'm going to shoot just slightly lower. See if we can catch this projectile. Have a look at it. Okay, so interesting thing about this test is that the temporary and permanent cavitation looked identical in both shots. So that's good for consistency's sake to see uh, the test perform twice with the pistol to know that each result is not just a fluke. But now what we have, since we have the catch block, we know what our total penetration is. And it wound up being about 19, 19 and a half inches of penetration. And the projectile, oddly enough, wound up nose forward instead of base forward. So that's a really interesting result. Um, in terms of the additional penetration, it's about seven and a half extra inches of penetration over what the CCI Stinger uh, was able to accomplish out of the same barrel length. So actually at this point, color me surprised, but now I do wanna check out the rifle. So we're gonna take a 16 inch barrel and perform the same test, but this time we're gonna flip this block around and shoot it from the other direction. I've got a couple of good clear areas here. We should be able to see what's going on. So let's go ahead and try the rifle out. All right, we got the Tipman M4 Elite here, the GOA version, by the way. And a uh, big shout out to GOA. And we're gonna shoot the Stinger into the block. 32 grain bullet out of a 16 inch barrel. All right, here we go. Right where I wanted it. All right. Let's have a look. All right, so pretty interesting result with the CCI Stinger. Uh, the projectile actually shed a lot of its uh, weight and everything. We've got some jacket pieces and a bit of the core. It did mushroom out and expand quite nicely. Oddly enough, only 11 and a half inches of penetration compared to the 12 inches of penetration in the 3.6 inch barrel. 
So the longer uh, barrel yielded higher velocity, which caused the projectile to lose its energy much quicker. So we noticed that the temporary cavity was much larger. Big old huge cavity, right? And limited penetration. So the CCI Stinger might be a better round if you are gonna use something like a Ruger 1022 for home defense or something like that, throw some Stingers in it and you definitely have a lot less collateral damage with less penetration, that might be a point of consideration. Of course, those uh, temporary cavities and the permanent cavities look pretty good, although on the punch, that permanent cavity is pretty gnarly as well. So I guess it all comes down to considerations, but we're gonna take the 16 inch barrel and test the punch. And we've got a catch block back here. So let's see how much penetration we get and let's have a look at that cavitation, shall we? Let's do it. Okay, 16 inch barrel out of the Tipman M4 Elite, this time with the 29 grain Federal Punch Round. Pretty interesting results we've been getting here today. All right. All right, one gel shot here. Right where I wanted it. Well, that's a fascinating result. We actually got considerably less penetration out of the 16 inch barrel than we did out of the pistol. Well, why is that? Well, one reason is because the projectile opened up a lot more. That temporary cavity looking pretty gnarly out of the punch. Uh, we got about a similar amount of penetration, so that's looking pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and pull this punch out with some forceps here. I've got it right here, all right? And I wanna show you how good that round expanded. So even though it's a, it's a, a soft point, essentially, or like a solid, it did open up. So there's the punch out of the 16 inch barrel and we've actually got what's left of the CCI out of the 16 inch barrel right beside it. So we're gonna pull that out and show you what it looks like as well. Yep, so you can see considerably less weight retention out of the Stinger. Uh, the punch had much better weight retention and held together being a solid. Here is the CCI Stinger that wound up base forward We'll grab it out of here, all right? There's our stinger out of the pistol. You notice it didn't open up, so it wasn't moving fast enough to open up in a handgun. Now, I would imagine that that Federal, or CCI rather, sells the stinger as a varmint round, and most people using it as a varmint round are gonna be using it out of a rifle. So, good penetration, and even though it didn't open up, it did have some nice temporary cavitation even out of the pistol. All right, and last but not least, I'm gonna move this rifle out of the way. I'm gonna grab this lonely projectile here. Look at that, like I've done that a time or two. All right, and then there's our punch fired out of the pistol that wound up settling in into a considerable amount of gelatin there. So what we learned is that if you're gonna run a rifle for some form of protection, the CCI Stinger is probably a great option because it's moving faster, it's definitely getting down, and you can see uh, with the rifle, it's no joke. If you're running a pistol, obviously the punch is probably gonna be a better option for a handgun. Naturally, it would make sense that Federal, uh, you know, published the numbers with a two inch barrel to show you that, hey, they're kind of hinting that this is designed to go out of shorter barrels for defensive purposes. So I could see that round being uh, quite effective. So. Interesting result. Uh, both rounds are great. Uh, there's a reason that they still make them, of course. So um, I'm still gonna be in the camp of CCI Stingers. That's, that's kind of my jam. However, those punches are quite sweet. If I were going to carry a handgun for self-defense, the punch would probably be a pretty solid option. But then again, so would the Stingers. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching. Many more on the way. I'm so happy to get back into doing some gel videos. In the next video, that we release, we're gonna be testing out a shotgun slug in ballistic gelatin, so stay tuned for that. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon.